Hi everyone, Sir Janice here and welcome to another episode of Vine Synatics TV. Today, we are going to learn about optical instruments, which is covered by Science 10, Quarter 2, Module 4. So join me as we explore the concepts with this topic. Today's video is anchored on the following competency, which is to identify ways in which the properties of mirrors and lenses determine their use in optical instruments. And specifically, we have the following objective. First one is we are going to try to name the different optical instruments. Then, we are going to describe the functions of each optical instrument. Then, followed by we are going to try to explain how a microscope magnifies small objects and how a telescope enables us to see distant objects. And lastly, we are all going to determine the similarities and differences between the telescope and the microscope. We already know how exceptional human vision is. As we all know, it is a wonderful instrument which relies on refraction and lenses to form images. But it has its limitation. What are these limitations? Do you know? Can you think of something that limits human vision? Okay. If you have answered that human vision is that one of its limitations is that we could not see very tiny objects or tiny things such as microorganisms and that we could not see far away objects, then they, uh, you are definitely correct. That's the reason why scientists invented microscopes and telescopes in order for us to enable uh, to see those objects. So what particular optical instruments that we are going to learn? Now, we are going to talk about these different optical instruments to include the magnifying glass, the microscope, a camera, binoculars, telescope, and endoscope, and lastly, periscope. So, are you ready to learn? The instrument that we are going to talk about is the magnifying lens. Now, the magnifying lens is the simplest optical instrument because it only uses one lens. Now, the type of lens that is uh, used for a magnifying lens is called a convex lens. The main function of the magnifying glass is to provide an image of an object that is bigger than that seen by the naked eye. How does a magnifying lens work? So, when using a magnifying glass, when you held it close to an object, it produces an image that is enlarged, virtual, and not inverted, as what you can see on the example. Now, can you still remember what type of lens is used to create a magnifying glass? Is it convex or concave? So if you have answered a convex lens, then you are definitely correct. The instrument that we are going to talk about is about the compound microscope. Now, can you still remember as to the function of the compound microscope? Now, if you have answered it is used to study microorganisms, then you are definitely correct. So, a round of applause for that. Now, as we all know that the compound microscope consists of a combination of lenses for magnifying objects several hundred times. Now, for the type of lens, uh, the microscope uses two converging lenses with short focal lens, or in short, it uses two convex lenses. How does a compound microscope magnify an object? Now, it is quite simple. The first one is that the first lens, which is near the object, is the objective lens, such as this one. Okay, so while the one near the object is known as the eyepiece, the objective lens forms first the real and enlarged inverted image, and to correct this one, the eyepiece, on the other hand, forms a farther enlarged erect but virtual final image. So it is a combination of the objective and the eyepiece. That we are going to learn about are cameras. Now, do you know the function of the camera? If you have answered it is used to record images and videos, then you are definitely correct. In today's society, a camera is somewhat an indispensable tool in order for us to document our daily life. So as you can see, it is used to record videos, take snapshots, and others. A camera is an optical instrument that forms and records an image of an object. 
then this image may be recorded on film or it may be detected by an electronic sensor. So whether it is uh, using film or an ele uh, electronic sensor that stores the image digitally, however, the image is recorded, all cameras form images in the same basic way. And what is this way? We are going to talk about later on. Earlier, that whether it is a film or a digital recording, cameras work uh, the same. So how does a camera record images? So first one is that, as you can see, light passes through the lens at the front of the camera and enters the camera through the opening called the aperture, such as this one. Okay, then the next step is that this light passes through the lens wherein it forms a real or reduced image. Then the image focuses on the film at the back of the camera and the lenses now may be moved back and forth in order for the camera to bring into focus so that it would not be blurry. And then lastly, the shutter now controls this one, the amount of light that actually strikes the film or sensor wherein it open longer in dim light to let more light in. So a camera uses a single convex lens with the object possession beyond 2f. So the image produced on the film is, what do you think? Based on this one. What do you think is the type of image that is formed by a camera? Okay, camera produces the type of image which is real, reduced, and as you can see, inverted. Okay, so the camera is focused by moving the lens back and forth, which is this one. This acts to reposition the focal points and focus the image correctly onto the film. The next type of optical instrument that we are going to learn are binoculars. Now, what do you think? is uh, the origin of the word binoculars. Now, from the word itself, as you can see, bi meaning two and oculars meaning eyepiece, then definitely, as you can see, binoculars consist of two pair of telescopes mounted together and each of these telescopes having an objective lens and an eyepiece, hence the word binoculars. Now, the image formed by the objective lens is upside down and the left and right sides are reversed. So binoculars use a system of prism to switch the image left to right and right to left. Then the eyepiece creates enlarged virtual upright images. This time, let us learn about the telescope. Now, if microscope is used to study microorganisms, telescopes on the other hand allows us to see distant objects and to observe heavenly bodies such as moons and stars. Now, it contains two converging lenses, namely the objective and the eyepiece, just like a binocular. Now, telescopes have different designs, but their main parts are just the same. So, you might be wondering, how does a telescope work? Now, based on what we have said or what we have learned earlier, we already know that the telescope has two basic parts. It is consists of a objective and of course an eyepiece. Now, as you can see, the objective is much larger than the eyepiece wherein it collects a large amount of light from far away objects. It has a very long focal length because the object distance is much greater than the image distance. The image produced by the objective are real, inverted, diminished, object. Now, this one, the objects now, or the images formed on using the objective lens will be now passed to the second lens which is known as the eyepiece. Now, the eyepiece lens has a short focal length and it acts like a magnifying lens for the image that is casted by the objective lens. Now, the eyepiece lens is closer to the eye and it forms a final virtual and an enlarged image. The next type of optical instrument that we are going to talk about is the endoscope. Now, as you can see, from the word endo meaning inside, so it is a camera wherein it is uh, consists of a long flexible tube that is inserted in the body so that a doctor can observe internal passages such as a person's esophagus or intestine. 
Now, it has converging lenses and bunches of optical fibers that convey the image to the end of the tube. It is connected, the endoscope is usually connected to a video which feeds what is seen on the other end. Now, the image can be observed through a computer monitor or screen. An endoscope uses the concept of total internal reflection. Now, here's a quick view of a video that is taken using endoscope. So, as you can see, this is a video of a human esophagus. Okay. The last type of optical instrument that we are going to learn about is the periscope. Now, a periscope can be uh, made using mirrors or it can be made using prisms. Now, where does a per uh, periscope used? So, periscope is usually used or typically used in a submerged submarine or behind a high obstacle wherein you can see things that are otherwise out of sight. This time, let us check how much you have learned from the video. So, for the first activity, which is titled, How It Works, you are going to complete the sentence with the choices provided. So, while answering, you may pause the video and press play to check your answer. So, good luck! So, here are the correct answers. So, for number one is convex, number two is objective, number three is close, four is inverted, five is enlarged, six is real, seven is eyepiece, eight is inverted, and nine is real. Did you get it all correct? If so, congratulations! For the next activity, it is titled Microscope versus Telescope. Now, what you are going to do is you are going to complete the needed uh, informations on the table provided. Now, you are going to use the word bank, which is located below. So, just like the first activity, you may pause the video while answering and press play to check your answer. So, here are the correct responses. For the type of lenses, microscope and telescope both uses the convex lens. Now, for the image form, for the objective lens, it is first image, real, inverted, and enlarged. For the eyepiece lens, you have final image, which is virtual and enlarged. In telescope, on the other hand, for the first image, which is real, inverted, and in, uh, reduced, and telescope is virtual and enlarged. In terms of their focal length of lenses, so for microscope, it is short, and eyepiece is also short, then objective is long, to capture the light from far away objects and lastly for the eyepiece lens is a short focal length so did you get it all correct congratulations so that's it for today's video i hope you have learned and have fun please feel free to click like comment and subscribe or much better ring the bell for you to be updated on the upcoming videos i'm synatics out thank you for listening everyone